When we talk about prehistoric monsters, we often think of dinosaurs, like the infamous short-armed carnivore Tronosaurus rex from Jurassic Park, or the Land Before Time's Petrie, a pterodactyl, or even the gentle giant long-necked Brontosaurus. They're enormous, scary, and it's pretty well acknowledged that they're all extinct, right? On the contrary, did you know that there are still prehistoric creatures alive? If that's not terrifying enough, these beasts dwell underwater, where we can't even see them. These monsters actually swam with dinosaurs 100 million years ago, and we are still able to catch them. Hey there, fishizens! Welcome back to Go Fishing Now, your number one source on the internet for daily fishing videos. Today, we're going to be talking about two prehistoric monsters that are still alive and well and swimming. Meet America's aquatic dinosaurs, the sturgeon and the alligator gar. Let's start with the sturgeon, America's almost gone dinosaurs. Sturgeons have been swimming in America's rivers for millions of years. With a sleek shape and rows of bony plates on its sides, these freshwater giants own the waters they patrol. Sturgeons have greenish-gray coloring and elongated spade-like snouts, with two pairs of whisker-like organs that dangle near their mouths. These organs, known as barbells, help these fish to discover their bottom-dwelling prey, consisting of snails, mussels, clams, crayfish, insect larvae, and fish eggs. It also makes it look like they have a sweet mustache. Fun fact, the sturgeon is actually both the oldest and the largest fish species in the North American Great Lakes. These freshwater behemoths live incredibly long lives. Males can live for up to 55 years, while females can live to an astonishing 150 years. They mature and start to breed when they are around 15 to 25 years old and spawn every four years. Females can lay anywhere from two to three million eggs in a single season. That's probably one of the reasons they have survived this long and still thrive in our rivers today. About two centuries ago, sturgeon were so abundant and physically massive that they made up 90% of the total fish population in the Great Lakes. But overfishing in the 1880s took a heavy toll on lake sturgeon numbers. The 20th century had seen a dramatic drop in sturgeon population and the closure of many fisheries. At first, the fish were being killed because of the damage they were causing to fishing gear. Later, they became intentional targets for their meat and eggs, which you probably know as caviar. Pollutants and the construction of dams are also to blame for the decrease of the sturgeon population. But in recent years, sturgeon numbers have started to recover. Tighter fishing regulations have been put in place for the Great Lakes and annual harvest limits are strictly enforced. The sturgeon in Wisconsin's Lake Winnebago River system in particular are fostered in additional places to help with the population. This means that the eggs are taken from the river and sent to hatcheries which will then be transported to other bodies of water to enhance sturgeon numbers. Increased numbers are now appearing throughout Maine's cold water streams, numerous lakes in Michigan and Wisconsin, and the waters of Florida's Suwannee River. A 14-foot Atlantic sturgeon has even been seen in New York's Hudson River. For reference, that's about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Similarly, in recent years, a female sturgeon was caught on Lake Winnebago in Wisconsin, measuring over seven feet long and weighing over 240 pounds. Now let's talk fishing. If you're hoping to catch one of these ancient beasts, you will want to find an area upstream from a deep hollow within the river. This is because sturgeons swim upstream from deeper to shallower waters to feed. According to many professional anglers, the best place to fish for sturgeon is a spot on the mouth of the rainy river called Four Mile Bay. This 40-mile stretch of river is the perfect sturgeon habitat and provides anglers with a chance to catch one of these monsters. I know you already have your bags packed and ready to go, but hang on for a bit longer before you book your trip. Sturgeons are not the only American dinosaur still roaming around today. Next up, we have to show a little love for a living fossil. Leave us a thumbs up if you like this type of video and let us know what other types of fish you'd like to learn about in the comments. Back to our living fossil, the alligator gar. To set the record straight, alligator gars are not in any way related to the alligators you know. Although they both live primarily in the water and you wouldn't want to stick your hand in either's mouth, I assure you they are quite different. The alligator gar stands out from the rest of the ray-finned fish called gar due to its massive size. 
This heavyweight comes in at up to 350 pounds and can grow to be more than 10 feet long. It also has two rows of teeth in its upper jaw, making it double terrifying. It has a long tubular body that includes diamond-shaped scales. Their long snouts help differentiate them from other fish until you get close enough to see their teeth then there's no mistake in these banked fish. The scales on this astonishing creature are what has historically made this a popular catch among fishermen. The thick, overlapping scales, referred to as ganoid scales, have long been used to make jewelry, tools, as well as a whole host of leather-based products. And the skin oil of the alligator gar was once used as an insect repellent. In present times, the alligator gar makes its home in many locations including Montana in the United States, Quebec in Canada, and even as far south as Costa Rica. According to fossil records, these fish have also roamed the waters of Europe, Africa, and South Asia at one time. All right, now you know where you're gonna go. Should you even try to catch one of these toothy creatures? While experienced fishermen find it a fun challenge to catch an alligator gar, it's not exactly the type of fish you would want to bring home to the family. Technically, the fish itself is edible, but it's not quite what you would enjoy at the dinner table. The eggs of all gar are poisonous to eat, so that already presents a potential problem. Also, their thick, armor-like overlaying of ganoid scales make it pretty hard to cook them. If you're feeling froggy, you can still take a crack at it in your home kitchen. If none of this has changed your mind so far and you're still up to fish for some wild alligator gar, Here's a few ways you can go about it. Many anglers searching for alligator gar commonly use bow fishing, rod and reel, or passive tools such as jug lines, limb lines, and trot lines. The downside of bow fishing is that there's only a small chance that the alligator gar would survive. So this is not your method if you're planning on releasing it later. Unlike most fish, the upper jaw of an alligator gar is comprised of cartilage and full of teeth. This makes this particular fish very resistant to piercing by standard fish hooks. This is why another common setup for alligator gar fishing is using carp as a bait on a bigger circle hook or a J hook. These are larger and big enough to catch on the alligator gar's lower jaw. If you don't have this type of hook, you need to know even more about the alligator gar to increase your chance of success when hooking one. When hunting for food, alligator gars typically pick up their prey i.e. your bait, and travel a long distance before actually eating it. This is why knowledgeable anglers wait and let the alligator gar swallow their bait instead of reeling it up as soon as it catches the hook like you would with other fish species. If you're going to use this technique, you should use small and non-stainless hooks to reduce the chances of internal damage, as larger hooks can penetrate crucial organs. Many still claim they are able to catch an alligator gar using just the basic rod and reel technique. It seems these fishermen have pretty equal success with both live bait and lures. And some even claim the best technique to catch this living dinosaur is fly fishing. I guess you'll just have to try it for yourself to see what works best. Well folks, there you have it. Everything you want to know about these prehistoric fish that still swim among us. Catching or even seeing one of these unique aquatic beasts is definitely worth the effort. These fish have seen the world change and evolve around them, and they find a way to adapt and keep going. What do you think of our prehistoric monsters? Have you ever caught one? Let us know in the comments. Let us know if you like this video and tune in for new fishing videos every day. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell or we'll sick our attack alligator gar on you.